Fritz Fiala came into the history in connection of the most perfidious attempt of the National Socialist to hide its biggest crime, which was a mass physical liquidation of European Jewry. Even though his name is in the most topical works in regarding problematics of the Holocaust, historical research did not pay too much attention to this mysterious man. In general, it was a chief editor of Bratislava magazine Grenzbote, who in the first half of 1942 visited a complex Auschwitz and wrote a series of propaganda uh, articles regarding the situation of Slovak Jews in the East. No one, none of the historians ask a direct question who, in fact, Fiala was, in what environment he was socialized, and what led him to identify himself with the National Socialistic Regime, why the choice was his, and what impact had the publication of the reporting on his life after year 1945, and which way his life took direction after the war and during Cold War. The answers to uh, problematic circles uh, are not very simple, bearing in mind the limiting uh, resources we have available, but I will try to answer them in my contribution. Friedrich Fritz Fiala, born in Vienna, 1906, came from an office German orientated family. Its predecessors uh, were of Czech origin, but it was not until Fritz's grandparents, uh, who believed they could increase their social status, began to feel like Germans. According to Fiala's curriculum vitae, his father believed he was Czech. After the disruption of Habsburg monarchy, he left Vienna and got into the services of new Czechoslovak state, into the structures of new Ministry of Industry, Trade and Life. The departure of father into Prague basically meant disruption of the family. Fritz with the mother uh, had trouble uh, dealing with the unstable uh, after war uh, republic, but we cannot really talk about this in depth because of lacking resources. The same as where the resources for his study at the Vienna University came from. The mystery is why he was not able to implement his knowledge into the field. A transfer station uh, for his career was his life at his uh, uncle. Albin Polashka in American Chicago. His satirical phaetons regarding American uh, society were so interested that Sunday Times uh, opened the door for Fiala's journalistic career. After coming from music, he did not return to Vienna but uh, stayed in Czechoslovakia where he gained a, gain a place in renowned liberal uh, magazine Prager Tablat. This working position did not really res re respond with his uh, former socialization, but on the other hand, it revealed one of the key features of Fiala's character, total opportunism. It also confirms his entry into the Heinlein Sudeten Deutsche Partei after a great victory of election in May 1935, which after 1945 attempted to relativize, relativize, relativize all bad financial situation of his family. In that time, Fiala was already working in Deutsches Tageszeitung. This independent newspaper came more and more under the influence of SDP, which brought intensification of anti-Jewish articles. This is where we have to look for his anti-Semitic origins. After Anschluss of uh, Austria, he became a Reich citizen and continues his journalistic career and enters the NSDAP. All these facts are in contradiction of what he tried to say to the judges or the organs of communistical security. 
nothing says more about his uh, anti nazistic uh, thinking as he presented in all of his speeches after the year 1945. Quite contrary. After three month education, he comes back to Sudet and enters the SDP magazine, Die Zeit. For unspecified reasons, he leaves to Bratislava and enters Grenzbote magazine. He worked as the assistant of chief editor and after chief editor Ferdinand Meisner left to Great Britain in July 1939, he took his post. Under Fian's leadership, this magazine uh, stopped to stagnate, increased the costs, and what was more important, it came to a nationalistic, socialistic line. On spring 1939, the Centrality of Security SS, the Kreisdienst, quoted, under Fela's leadership, the magazine became the most informated, most actual newspapers among all Slovak magazines. End of quote. Fela in Slovakia was not only a journalist. Into Bratislava he came with his a messenger uh, duty. He was not only working for Zichra Heisdienst, but also for NSDAP with Martin Bonman as a leader. And he was also a member of Abwehr. Vienna SD basically uh, said that he should comprom compromise the Ferdinand Dorchensky as the leader of foreign ministry. He was a member of the Elaborate since 1940, and this was forwarded to the main protagonist of Slovakia politics. He has strong ties with the Borman apparat, where he probably remained a lot of instructions of how to remove this uh, minister. After Salzburg dictate 1940, he still remained in the services of Nazi uh, agencies, but the reconstruction of his uh, attempt cannot be achieved without uh, enough resources. Under Fiala's leadership, Krenzbote quickly profiled themselves as anti-Semitic news. The editor self-stated a new attacking uh, Semitic tone. Pia although claimed that he was only instructed according to the Office of Propaganda, but this is really questionable. The sources are proving quite contrary. In an attempt to persuade Nazistic uh, leaders uh, regarding his loyalty to the regime, he was himself during the initiative and he really embraced the racist legal framework that came into place in 1941. In 1942 he propagand propaganded the idea of extermination of the Jews and removing the deportation of the Jewish population from Slovakia and he also criticized the church. In August 1942, when we have a temporary uh, stop to deportation, Fila energetically stressed that he wanted to have a marking to all the Jews that should remain in the country. Apart from this, on the pages of Grenzbote, he demanded the verification of the birth documents and also creating a list of the Jewish membership and their working place. In the terms of pu publicizing this ultimate, we already had the news about evacuating the Jews. The government, in the attempt to uh, converge this, wanted to send a commission to visit uh, particular areas where the Jews were deported. Dietrich Wieslitzemi and Mr. Ludin, of course, came to a resistance from Adolf Eichmann, executive realizer of the final question. This, of course, was still in place, but Eichmann, perhaps after consultation with uh, leader Heinrich Himmler, 
decided to allow a supervision of loyal journalists outside of Germany and use his reporting as a valid contraband to increasing information regarding the physical liquidation of the Jews. The choice, the choice was on the shoulders of Fiala. It was presented in Grenzbote and his close connection to Himmler SD came to a close decision. Fiala's uh, way to occupy Poland is still unclear today. Official documents are not present. The observer can lie on the shoulders of afterward uh, reports from Wieslitzeni and Fiala, but they are very unclear and try to blame someone else. Later, when Wieslitzeni and Eichmann were long after that, Fiala came uh, with new and new inventions which Polish procurator cannot verify. It was not necessary because there was no criminal act against Fiala and he was just a witness uh, at the jury of Franz Karmasini and member of Eichmann's referent RSHA, Friedrich Boshammer and Otto Hunchen. The clearest picture was offered by Wislitzeni. The questionable is its dating and all the localization of Fiala's uh, place. According to the words of the former um, advisor on the Jewish question, the part took place in the summer 1942 and Fiala, after he stopped in Julina, visited ghetto in Sosnowiec and in the same day Auschwitz-Birkenau. Everything that Fiala was supposed to see was perfectly in theater. Not for him, however, because he should have a lot of clues how other members of German minorities in 60 years did this in the congregation of Karma Zin, karma zin uh, expectation. So this theater should be as an inspiration rather than a report and write this and send it further for the knowledge of European general public. So Wieslitzeni's version is the only remaining official document and has two gaps. According to the Telegraph of Bratislava Embassy from 1st September 1942, the road could not be conducted in the middle of the summer 1942. Ludin clearly demands the agreement to create a propagandistic review and a positive uh, stand from Auswärtiges Amtu and this came 12 years later. So apart from this, in the telegram there is no mention of the eastern Slesia, but about the Lublin area, where part of the Port Jewish uh, uh, membership were sent off in the framework of action Reinhardt. So this all had to occur after the 12th of 9 and not in the summer. And the final location is still questionable. So whether Fiala actually saw Sosnowitz or Auschwitz or one of the ghettos in Lublin is not clear until today. Even though Fiala himself said that the place of his visit was Auschwitz, most of the names he said in his report were deported to Lublin area. On the other hand, we can say that Eichmann could choose to shift the final uh, visit place of Fiala. And according to Operation Reinhardt, they believed it was not very valuable that the region should be visited by unwelcome people. But this created a lot more questions. Shortly after Fiala arrived to Bratislava, he wrote a couple of articles. Wieslitzeni sent them to Eichmann and he translated it to the lecture to Himmler. After several weeks of waiting and edits, Reich leader SS agreed with its publication. They adjusted the articles from Slovak, Gardista, Slovenska Politika, Magyar Hirlat, and from foreign magazines Gardiste, Donatzeitung und Pariser Zeitung. The addiction of these articles is clearly cynical, misinformational, and the text is full of traditional anti-Semitic stereotypes and prejudice. 
there is a very laughable tone present in the whole reputation and the Jews are being submerged to a level of uh, sort of creating an image of uh, people who are unable to work. The life of Jews in the East, that's the name of the article, almost idyllically depicts uh, idyllically describes the life and says that the Jews never had such a good time as they have now. The peak of the cynicism is the articles regarding the saints, self-sufficiency, their own traits, basic hygienical standards, and a satisfactory level of health care. Although the report did not really bring uh, to file a superior the expected effect, for himself it was another career step. In the January 1943, he gained a post of main correspondent of press agency Auswärtiges Amtu, Transcontinent Press in Istanbul. Of course, including his task, especially to infiltrate his uh, allied uh, messenger networks in in Turkey. So in the 1944, uh, the Brits basically gave him to Czechoslovak offices, and the local public judge in Bratislava condemned him for 10 years of uh, removing his freedom. This was also for his infamous report. He started to cooperate with the Czechoslovakic journalistic bodies, which allowed him to leave the prison in 1955. For Czechoslovak uh, espionage, he started to work only since year 1982. So for helping to spread the misinformation, he was not no longer pursued and persecuted in the National Republic of Germany. Thank you very much for your attention.